Hello, good morning, and welcome to St Martin's Broad Main for morning prayer on Wednesday. It's the 13th of June, and we're using common worship, ordinary time, provision, using morning prayer on Wednesday. And that's found towards the beginning of the Red Book, after prayer during the day, morning and evening prayer, seasons and ordinary time, morning prayer on Wednesday. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. A song of God's glorious name. O Lord, our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised out of the mouths of babes at the breast. You have founded a stronghold against your foes, that you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained, what are mortals that you should be mindful of them, mere human beings that you should seek them out? You have made them little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands and put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. So to the Psalter at the back of the Red Book for Psalm 119, verses 57 to 80. 119 from 57 to 80. I know, O Lord, that your judgments are right. You only are my portion, O Lord. <clears throat> I have promised to keep your words. I entreat you with all my heart. Be merciful to me according to your promise. I have considered my ways and turned my feet back to your testimonies. I made haste and did not delay to keep your commandments. Though the court of the wicked entangle me, I do not forget your law. At midnight I will rise to give you thanks because of your righteous judgments. I am a companion of all those who fear you, those who keep your commandments. The earth, O Lord, is full of your faithful love. Instruct me in your statutes. You have dealt graciously with your servant, according to your word, O Lord. O teach me true understanding and knowledge, for I have trusted in your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. You are gracious and do good. O Lord, teach me your statutes. The proud have smeared me with lies, but I will keep your commandments with my whole heart. Their heart has become gross with fat, but my delight is in your law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is dearer to me than a hoard of gold and silver. Your hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Those who fear you will be glad when they see me, because I have hoped in your word. I know, O Lord, that your judgments are right, and that in very faithfulness you caused me to be troubled. Let your faithful love be my comfort, according to your promise to your servant. Let your tender mercies come to me that I may live, for your law is my delight. Let the proud be put to shame, for they wrong me with lies. But I will meditate on your commandments. Let those who fear you turn to me, even those who know your testimonies. 
Let my heart be sound in your statutes, that I may not be put to shame. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I know, O Lord, that your judgments are right. We use the prayer that follows in silence. So to the canticle in morning prayer for Wednesday, a song of the word of the Lord. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from above, and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread to eat. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me fruitless, but it will accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the task I gave it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Return to the Lord, who will have mercy, to our God, who will richly pardon. <coughs> so to chapter 5 of Judges, chapter 5 of Judges. Then Deborah and Barak, son of Abinam, sang on that day, saying, When locks are long in Israel, when the people offer themselves willingly, bless the Lord. Hear, O kings, give ear, O princes, to the Lord I will sing, I will make melody to the Lord, the God of Israel. Lord, when you went out from Seir, when you marched from the region of Edom, the earth trembled and the heavens poured. The clouds indeed poured water, the mountains quaked before the Lord, the one of Sinai, before the Lord, the God of Israel. In the days of Shamgar, son of Anath, in the days of Jael, caravans ceased and travellers kept to the byways. The peasantry prospered in Israel, they grew fat on plunder. Because you arose, Deborah arose as a mother in Israel. When new gods were chosen, then war was in the gates. Was shield or spear to be seen among 40,000 in Israel? My heart goes out to the commanders of Israel who offered themselves willingly among the people. Bless the Lord. Tell of it, you who ride on white donkeys, you who sit on rich carpets, and you who walk by the way, to the sound of musicians at the watering places where they repeat the triumphs of the Lord, the triumphs of his peasantry in Israel. Then down to the gates marched the people of the Lord. Awake, awake, Deborah, awake, awake, utter a song. Arise, Barak, lead away your captives, O son of Abinoam. Then down marched the remnant of the noble, the people of the Lord marched down for him against the mighty. From Ephraim they set out into the valley, following you, Benjamin, with your kin. From Machir marched down the commanders, and from Zebulun came those who bear the marshal's staff. The chiefs of Issachar came with Deborah, and Issachar, faithful to Barak, into the valley they reached, rushed out at his heels among the clans of Reuben. There were great searchings of heart. Why did you tarry among the sheepfolds and hear the piping for the flocks among the clans of Reuben? There were great searchings of heart. Gilead stayed beyond the Jordan, and Dan, why did he abide with the ships? Asher sat still at the coast of the sea, settling down by his landings. Zebulun is a people that scorned death, Naphtali too on the heights of the field. The kings came, they fought, then fought the kings of Canaan at Tanakh by the waters of Megiddo. They got no spoils of silver. The stars fought from heaven. From their courses they fought against Sisera. The torrent Kishon swept them away. The onrushing torrent, the torrent Kishon, march on my soul with might. Then loud beat the horse's hooves with the galloping, galloping of his steeds. Curse Meroz, says the angel of the Lord, curse bitterly its inhabitants, because they did not come to the help of the Lord, to the help of the Lord against the mighty. Most blessed of women be Jael, the wife of Heber, the Kenite of tent dwelling women, most blessed. He asked water and she gave him milk. She brought him curds in a lordly bowl. She put her hand to the tent peg and her right hand to the workman's mallet. She struck Sisera a blow. She crushed his head. She shattered and pierced his temple. He sank, he fell. He lay at her feet. At her feet he sank, he fell. Where he sank, there he fell, dead. 
Out of the window she peered, the mother of Cicero gazed through the lattice. Why is his chariot so long in coming? Why tarry the hoofbeats of his chariots? Her wisest ladies made answer. Indeed, she answered the question herself. Are they not finding and dividing the spoil, a girl or two for every man? Spoil of dyed stuff for scissors, spoil of dyed stuffs embroidered, two pieces of dyed work embroidered for my neck as a spoil. So perish all your enemies, O Lord, but may your friends be like the sun as it rises in its might. The land had rest for 40 years. So we're in Judges, and uh, it's a book which describes the move from, of God's people, from being those led by Moses and uh, Joshua, um, through to them seeking a king. And it's hugely allegorical, there's a fair amount of narrative in it, but it begins, it is the period of time when they were ruled by judges and God was their king. But they seek a king, which moves us then on to Kings, Kings and Chronicles, as they find uh, out what the prophets said would be the case under Saul, David, Solomon and following. But here we have the judge Deborah. I'm not quite sure what the authority was of Barak. may have been a tribal leader of priests. I've only got this short passage that I actually read, so chapter 5 in front of me, but may explain the previous and following chapters. But this is a poem, a song, telling more or less the same story that yesterday's chapter did as we read it. That um, the people being oppressed by uh, Sisera, and so they called out to God, and uh, they had this battle. <coughs> Deborah sent Barak to fight. Barak said he wouldn't go unless she went with her. <coughs> I think she did go. So she's another warlike woman. One of the tribes um, left the main area of battle to, to rest up somewhere else, and then this scissor a chap leaving the battle thought he was resting amongst friends or neutral people. But then jail wife of the Kenite um, puts a tent peg through his head after she'd offered him hospitality. So she's a pastoralist. I don't know whether that's she's done it because she's ordinarily wouldn't to be would not to be trusted, but she's actually working on God's behalf, not the sort of thing that a settled, good settled Hebrew tribe member would do. Maybe, I don't know or conjecture but it's a very interesting example of a song I particularly like that section he sank he fell he lay still at her feet at her feet he sank he fell where he sank there he fell dead I have to remember as we are reading scripture what style and genre it is in there's a great long section there describing where the tribes are how the tribes behaved Reuben, Gilead, Ephraim, Issachar some of them were obviously warlike. Dan, why did he abide with the ships? Different classes of people, I presume those who ride on white donkeys are particularly grand. The following line, you can sit on rich carpets. Musicians, we're told, sing of stories at watering places. So watering places where people met people from different tribes, different parts of the land. And so as they sang songs, they, they learned of each other's experiences. It would have been like, I guess, looking up online or following a Facebook group or some such. And uh, obviously musicians sang at watering places. It's an instruction to pick up something of culture in these things. And very definitely, well, there we are, when new gods were chosen, so there's very definitely a faith element of this song. God fights for his people, <clears throat> but apparently needs the assistance of tribes and people. We're told their Meroz is to be cursed because they didn't come to the help of the Lord against the mighty. But 
that we're told the land was doing well before these new gods were chosen. Until God fights for the people. So it's a great song. And then right at the very end, so we're told at the beginning, then Deborah and Barak sung, sang this song. So the previous chapter we told about the battle and how it went. Then this is their response. Reminds me of um, the song of Air on Miriam, is it, or Miriam and somebody else after, um, I forget which battle it was, but some victory, maybe coming through the Red Sea. Yes, it was, wasn't it? It was coming through the Red Sea as uh, the Hebrews came out of Egypt. A similar song was sung. And then we have the closing line, and the land had rest for 40 years, i.e. a long period of time, like 40 days. It wasn't necessarily um, 40 sets of 365 days, but a significant chunk of time, best part of a generation, kind of as long as we can remember, or a similar expression, but it's a, it's a period of time. It was a saying, but therefore it's become associated with, I don't know, the 40 days of Lent, for instance, and Jesus' 40 days in the wilderness, 40 chunks of time. 40 years they were in the wilderness, the land had rest for 40 years. So, to our next reading, Luke 13 from 22. Luke 13 from 22. Jesus went through one town and village after another teaching as he made his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few be saved? He said to them, strive to enter through the narrow door, for many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able. When once the owner of the house has got up and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside to knock at the door saying, Lord, open to us, then in reply he will say to you, I do not know where you come from. Then you will begin to say, we ate and drank with you and taught in your streets, but he will say, sorry, and you taught in our streets, but he will say, I do not know where you come from. Go away from me, all you evildoers. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves thrown out. Then people will come from east and west, from north and south, and will lead in the kingdom of God. Indeed, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to him, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed away from Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem. The city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you are not willing. See, your house is left to you. And I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. So, a couple of interesting paragraphs. The first, giving us an example of Jesus' teaching. I suppose the second is also another example of his teaching. But in a slightly different, or maybe a debate might be the second one. So the first, somebody asking a pretty open question, will only a few be saved? Well, it's not an open question, but it's a question that's not designed to trap just a yes, no, but <clears throat> will only a few be saved? Someone, as he makes his way to Jerusalem or, and or his death, will only a few be saved? His response to everybody is strive to enter through the narrow door. And then effectively he says, well, you don't, won't actually know whether you will be able to get in or not, because at some stage the door will be shut and uh, you will try and get in, but you'll be told that uh, God doesn't know you. And then um, you'll gnash your teeth when you see all the good people in the place where you weren't allowed to be. <coughs> but people will come from the east and the west, north and south and in the kingdom of God. And those who are first will be last and those who are last will be first. So that's interesting. <clears throat> One wonders whether the crowd he was speaking to were self-righteous 
that might be an explanation as to why what he says is so harsh. But then he goes on to say that those of Jewish background, the prophets Abraham, will be in the kingdom of God. But also people from east, west, north and south, in other words, foreigners. Now that's interesting because the most obvious example we have of Jesus dealing with a foreigner was a Syrophoenician woman and he called her a dog, or female dog. <clears throat> but here he says people will come from other parts of the world and be in the kingdom of God. And I guess there he moves on and describes that in other terms as last being first and first being last. In other words, those who are of God's people, those whom God sent the Messiah to bring into the kingdom of God are not getting it and so will be last. Whereas those who had no idea that there was such a concept as the Messiah or Saviour will be led in before them. And in many respects, the second paragraph expresses the pain and anguish that uh, Jesus has. So the opening line is the Pharisees telling him to get away because Herod wants to kill him, which is interesting, duplicitous. The Pharisees <coughs> were struggling because they were a good, charismatic, devoted, pious, determined, committed group of Jews who were the closest probably to getting Jesus, but it's so often the way people are so close, they can be so far. Are they telling him that Herod wants to kill him because they want him out of the way? And they would rather save his life, this particular group of Pharisees, knowing that indeed the Pharisees were after his life too. Were they just stirring up <coughs> dissension? Everybody, Jesus, would have known <coughs> that Herod would have been after him, even if only for political reasons. Jesus was causing um, <coughs> different sections of the community to get ideas and division and the potential for riot. And Herod is a puppet ruler, Jewish king in parentheses under Pilate, <coughs> to give the impression of sustained, some sort of sustained normality. Would have been very concerned at the idea of riot or an uprising, because then Rome would have come down hard on him, as well as the people that he was nominally in charge of. But Jesus' response to the Pharisees is aimed at them rather than Herod. I'm casting out demons and performing cures. That would have been the sort of thing that the Pharisees should have been impressed with. It's interesting, isn't it, that they often accuse Jesus of doing those things on the Sabbath. It's not that he's doing them, but it's when he's doing them that they are concerned about. Because in some respects, I guess, they feel it's not proper. But then Jesus says, I'm going to carry on doing this because it's not my time yet but I'm very concerned and upset and worried about Jerusalem. He uses that word three times. The city that kills the prophets and stones those sent to it. And then he speaks as it were as, as God. Long, I have long desired to gather your children as a hen gathers her brood. But you, I tell you, you will not see me in time to time until the time comes when you say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. See your house is left to you. In other words, it's all on your own head, on your own head be it. And that expression, blessed is one who comes, could be him turning up in triumph on what is recognised by the church as Palm Sunday. Um, but I suspect he's meaning when he comes back for the second coming, the judgment, the wrapping up of all things at the end of time, as the kingdom of God is fully, finally established at the marriage supper of the Lamb when he comes in victory. So to the responsory back in morning prayer on Wednesday. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. To the song of Zechariah. You show mercy to our ancestors and remember your holy covenant. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, 
holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. You show mercy to our ancestors, and remember your holy covenant. Let us pray. One God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you for birthing us into consciousness, awareness of you, into faith. We thank you for taking the initiative that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son. We thank you that the Son has risen in our lives on our day, and that Son brings creativity, warmth, beauty, productivity, healing, sight, vision, hope. So we thank you for that great victory and we pray that we will sing of it in the watering places. And we ask that you will assist us to strive for the narrow door that we will be find, found amongst those in the kingdom, those drawn from the north, the south, the east and the west. And we pray that you will draw others to yourself, through us, and despite us during the day ahead. <coughs> From Operation World, a prayer for Haiti, which needs godly leaders who will prioritise the good of the nation. Two centuries of misrule, tyranny and flawed democratic attempts <coughs> have brought hopelessness and despair. <coughs> Corruption, they write, is rampant. Robberies, kidnapping is commonplace. We pray that people be raised up who will reverse these trends and establish justice, righteousness and long-term stability. With Christian Action Research and Education, we ask that you will comfort children who have been subjected to cruelty and exploitation and set them free from feelings of shame and worthlessness. We also bring them justice. We also ask that you help them be healed of the painful effects of physical, sexual and emotional abuse. We ask you to draw them close to those and help them find healing for their wounded lives. We pray that they will know you have opportunity to come across you in a way that is consoling and comforting. We pray for all who work to prevent such things in the first instance and to bring such things to light that children can be rescued and helped. from Green Christian. Major global investors representing a little over $10 trillion in assets under management, including Aviva, AXA, Legal and General, have called on oil and gas companies to be more transparent and robust in their efforts to tackle escalating climate risks. Their letter states that the case for action on climate change is clear. They are keenly aware of the need to shift the global economy onto low carbon footing. Emissions for the oil and gas industry account for about half of all pollution. Warning that a transition to a low carbon economy is essential for maintaining global economic stability. Investors want to see oil and gas firms make concrete commitments to reduce their carbon impacts. Praise God for that. Often not known or spoken about. But thank you that they have agreed as investors to that end. We pray that others like them will bring pressure to bear on all sectors that pollute I pray that similar um, leverage as it might be known is brought to bear on house builders uh, in this country producers of vehicles that move towards electric vehicles wholesale that becomes normal the houses are built and even retrofitted where it will work with uh, 
lower voltage solar wind storage based renewable based sourcing of power and the harvesting and reuse of grey and rain water and more sustainable dealing with foul effluent and I'm sure it's used for building also will be sustainable in our benefits we pray your blessing on our children and youth team members across the benefits especially those who are recognising that things we are now doing we will not be able to continue to do as uh, personnel move on change capacity changes pray both that we will be able to deal with that grief and frustration but also recognise other areas perhaps of growth and that we may continue to pray for opportunities to bring children on and in to our church life. We pray your blessing on Anna, Jerry, Kate, Ian, Sarah, Richard, Paul, Sam, Serena, David, Warmwell, Guy, Jenny, Ruby, Marion, John, Jennifer, Dorothy, Nicola, Elizabeth, Linda, John, Julia, Leslie, Marilyn, Roger, Bill, Warmwell, Helen, David, Timothy, Paul, June, Rebecca, Andrew, Anthony, Philippa, Selena, Tim, Wendy, Peter, Sarah, John, Frieda, John, Louise in Holworth. We thank you for each of these and their commitment in terms of time, talents, money, faith to your church and the wider community. We pray that you bless them with health, wealth, prosperity of salvation, healing and deliverance, especially where they are finding life to be hard graft through sickness, poverty, being overstretched in terms of commitment. As we provide for them. We pray that with them you draw us on into situation where you are our primary motivator in our prayer, study and service, that we will be motivated and inspired, that that will be the core part of our being, that all else we do will be a derivative or a contributor to the fact that we are your children and that we are called to bring the kingdom of God in, to work with you, to see souls saved, healed and delivered bring people to baptism and decide for people in the things that we, they, have been taught. We pray that that will be the excitement, the energy for us, for them. Also the consolation and comfort. And we pray for those amongst these for whom things are going well, that they will be moved in that same spirit to be a blessing to neighbours far and near who need that assistance and support. And we pray for the establishment of life groups in each of those villages. It would be miraculous, but we pray for that as a core and a focus for your work in those places. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Tu 
Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. Order us in all our doings and guide us to do always what is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.